at me there. Up into the snows he went, again and again, toward the Forbidden Kingdom, the land that had locked its gates to the outside world. Here occurred some of his greatest adventures. Here, too, he often faced bitter opposition. In one town, about a day's journey from the Tibetan border, he was thrown into prison. So he said, if you attend to a sick man, you are doing it unto me. So many of those prisoners opened their hearts to the sadhu's message and became Christian believers. The authorities had him removed. He was taken to the marketplace and publicly tortured. But though he suffered much pain, he accepted the punishment with such calmness, the authorities became frightened. Thinking him to be some sort of god, they set him free. Entering Tibet, he immediately made friends. God, Eve, love. <laughs> and he loves my little dons in armor. <laughs> so, Christianity is a way of life that is full of fun and joy and hope. Christ said, look at the birds of heaven. Do they worry for tomorrow? Who looks after them? It is your heavenly father. Sadhu Sundar Singh loved life. He loved people. Perhaps he loved children most of all. He tried to establish Sunday school for the children of Tibet. One prominent lama, impressed by the sadhu's teaching, issued a summons for the people of his area to come and listen to the Christian message. But there was also opposition. As with each visit, and the sadhu made 15 trips into Tibet, resistance stiffened against his witness. The penalty of death threatened anyone bringing a new religion into this forbidden country. But again and again, his new friends looked after his safety. When persecution came, and it often did, there were always those who showed mercy. But then, on one of his last visits to Tibet, the sadhu had an awesome experience. Into the pit of death! The sadhu had no way of knowing how long he lay unconscious in that death-laden darkness. Nor did he have any idea how many days passed. This was surely the end of his life. Lord Jesus. Lord, I love to suffer for you. Really, I do. But this, this is much, much more than I can bear. Forgive me, Lord. 
quoi de mieux How like the natural state of man this was, the sadhu thought. Man lost in darkness, in his sin, hopeless to save himself. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. We are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ of the Lord. He who knew no sin was made sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Christ died for our sins. How I thank you, my blessed Lord. He rose again from the dead. And he lives in me. Wherever I may be, whatever my circumstances, I thank you, my Lord. Endlessly the time dragged. Then, when it seemed he could not draw another breath, The sadhu was overjoyed at this sudden, unanticipated deliverance. But when he looked around to thank his rescuer, there was no one to be seen. He was convinced it was a miracle. In a short while, guards captured him and brought him to the Lama. How had he escaped? Venerable sir, you cast me into the pit of death and left me to die. But my Lord is the Lord of life. There was only one key and only one key. When the sadhu returned once more to India, the Tibetan government sent word to every border post of the country that this man must never again be allowed to enter. So for several years, he remained in India. His work continued, his deeds of love and kindness, his tireless ministry of telling people about God's love and grace. But his heart could not rest. Tibet loomed constantly in his thoughts and in his prayers. And so, in 1929, Though urged by his friends not to go, he made his way back once more. He never returned. No one knows what happened. Perhaps his work for God finished, he was permitted to at last take that greatest of all journeys, the journey to the sky. story and true every word oh, you or I could not live such a life I couldn't you are correct 
Such a life can only be lived when the spirit of Christ is in us, when it is Christ himself loving the world through us. Must we become sadhus, put on the saffron robe as Sundar Singh did? Perhaps. But this is a different age, Shushil. It is a different age. It is always the right time to seek his grace, to walk in his way. I could not. I must go. Why, Ram? I cannot bear to hear more. Ram! Ram, wait a moment. Please come. Where? I want to show you something. This your home? You were forbidden to stay? You? Like Sadhu Sundar Singh? Teach me the way of Christ, 